Yeah, the um, the back of this is in really, really good shape, just like the front. I mean, it's in literally pristine shape. It's the best tape that I've found so far. I haven't looked that much for them, but really, really good shape, good condition, and it sounds really good. So, you know, you ask yourself, well, you know, are the labels a direct indicator of the, of the condition of the tape? I would say generally, yes. I'd, and I can, I'll go through here, and so far we're batting about 1,000 here on, on that criteria. I got another one, which is a really, really, really good sounded tape. Frampton comes alive. The front label, as you can tell, most of these are bubbled and trashed. This one's in really good shape. Um, back, you know, got a little bit of bubbling, a little bit of just, you know, damage from the ends where somebody was, you know, probably put it in a case or something like that. But, it, you know, pretty good shape. Um, it's probably about an 8 out of 10 in terms of the condition. Um... Cheap Trick Live at Budokan. We're just going from good to bad here, but this one, a little bit more bubbling, but really, a really, really good sound and tape, but not excellent. Now you see, there's a little bit of yellowing on this. You got some bubbling. Um, again, you're starting to get into the area. They're still good, but you know, you, you can't guarantee this one's great. Okay, so Bob Seeger Live Bullet. Um, this was from 76. It's a little bit older tape. And, you know, again, now you're getting into questionable stuff. This still sounds pretty good, but I would rank it, you know, somewhere in the middle on quality. You see, you see the label, you see all of the, the bubbling that you get. And just generally, you know, there's nothing on the back. These things have been put in toolboxes of people's cars. They just really haven't been taken care of real well if they're, if this is going on with it. So let me get to the bad. Okay, the Creedence. This is one of the original ones. This is from probably 69 or 70. Um, this is an early tape. This is an early cart. Look, see how dirty it is? This is in somebody's car sliding around in a box or some floor pan or something like that. Um, this is one of the rubber roller ones. This is the one I had a lot of trouble with when I rebuilt. So uh, sounds okay, but not great. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this in a second. And then there's a couple ones. Led Zeppelin. Um, these labels are trashed. And the tapes suck, um, frankly. So the problem with popular bands, particularly with Led Zeppelin, is people just, you know, listen to the crap out of this thing. And, you know, partiers love Led Zeppelin. And so these things aren't going to be taken care of generally. So you have to, have to hunt for a good copy of a Zepp tape. I mean, they're all the same way. I don't have any good Zeppelin tapes, but I'm batting zero on them. Um, they're just, they all have flaws and they're all worn out or something's wrong with them. So, um, come back to this one. Um, I noticed this with cassettes. The the earlier cassettes, or then actually just any tapes from, a, I guess from 65 up to about 73, sound quality, not that great. They're, they track the cassettes. I don't know if they change the formula, change the tape types. So if you got early tapes, you're lucky if they sound good compared to the la the later stuff. They, they're they're just not gonna. If you don't get frustrated because they're just they're not as good, um, in my opinion. So just keep that in mind. You're gonna have to really boost the treble on these things, and they're gonna have more noise. Um, so just keep it in mind when you get early stuff. And you're not disappointed. And there's I don't think there are any good ones from that era. Maybe there are, but let me talk a little bit more about um, some kind of oddities or rarities. Maybe or just talk a little bit about. Um, the thing I was talking about earlier about trying to get a tape that's got good tracks on it, Dream Police, because great tape sounds excellent. I have a hard time listening to this because, you know, the Dream Dream Police, Voices, um, Gonna Raise Hell, th those are good. The rest of them, ah, tough, man. But this is this this one I just happen to like the, the one track I like the, the dream police is okay the gun raise hell I wanted it so there you go but it's tough to sit through so that's an example of one that I probably wouldn't get if I had to do it again um this is an example of another early tape this is Hendrix's smash hits this is a weird one it's these weird colors they tended to go in more for this in the beginning um these bizarre colors there's another one this bad company pink tape um just most of them are black and white or some blue ones but gray um but the pink ones the colored ones are a little more scarce um that was just something that's interesting same deal this is an early tape the highs are just not there and it's noisy um 
the, and I'm going to cover this just because I'm a big Hendrix fan or really used to be a much larger Hendrix fan than I am now. But um, this is the soundtrack from the Hendrix movie. Uh, I It was incredibly rare on album. And it's I getting the 8-track, I was like, holy cow, sounds good. Um, it's a big tape. It's a double album. Um, there's a lot of tape on this thing. Amazingly, sounds really good after it was rebuilt. So that's a rare one. Um, Hendrix 1 and Essentials 1 and 2, these were released by Warner Brothers uh, in 77 or 78. Uh, I think Eddie Kramer and the engineers took all of his tracks, put on here and did a single and then a double album. Um, both of these are in great shape. I was really fortunate to get this. This one, this is the biggest reel of tape I have ever seen in an 8-track. It's freaking amazing. It's huge. I, I can't believe they got it. It's stuffed. Sounds good. Doesn't drag. Um, so if you ever get one, just be aware of that. So any rate, so that's where we are from a tape collection perspective. I don't think any of the rest of these, I mean, they're all, I showed pictures of them. They're all kind of interesting. Um, nothing really notable. Beatles tapes or, you know, the, the blue, I don't have the original ones. I got the, the mic, the best over, if you want to call it that, the, they call it the blue and the and red albums. Uh, the rest of the stuff is kind of just running the mill. It's what you're going to find. It's what I like. But at any rate, um, and that's it. That's the segment. We just wanted to cover the collection of everything that's been rebuilt. And later we're going to talk about quads and some of the other stuff that's, that's in the collection. So hope you enjoy. Thanks.